Well, good afternoon. Welcome to the final part of Northwest eLearn for this year. Uh, my name is David Utchel. I'm the instructional designer at Klamath Community College. This is Edis Worden, who is the lead for the CTL and also instructional innovation trainer. I can, can never, never get the right, yeah. <laughs> they come out in some of those three, but yes, anyway. So we're going to talk about um, how you have a new CTL team come in and re-envision what a CTL is going to be. So we have recreated and expanded the scope of the CTL. So we are very excited to present at this year's Northwest eLearn because we attended the last year's for the first time in Boise. And during that time, whenever we were in Boise, we had a chance to sit down and talk about what both our vision was for the CTL. We had to, I believe, fly from Klamath, or we drove from Medford to, to Portland to Seattle to Boise. And so as you um, know, whenever you're sitting in the airports, you don't have a lot of the pressures and things that come with normal day-to-day -day existence in a career, you get the chance to talk about these things. And you get the chance to have those vision discussions that you wouldn't normally have. And so um, Edis had been with the CTL for about eight months at that mm -hmm. point. I'd come in, I'd been here for about two months. I had a fair amount of ex past experience. Edis had previous experience with KCC. And so we put that together to be able to kind of refashion and reimagine the CTL, and I'll talk about that today. At one point, it was Edis and Debbie, and then we doubled our staff, added me, and also added Ian, who's back in the back. And so I'd like to give you a little bit of history about KCC. It started out in humble beginnings. It came out of a small, or it's a, we're a small college in central, south, or south central Oregon. We've been in existence for about 20 years after our beginnings in the basement of a local church. And I think other community colleges in Oregon, Washington, Idaho have similar humble beginnings and come from similar circumstances. So in 2010, a 16,000 foot uh, technology center was completed in winter 2011. The health center building was completed and we have grown significantly. We now have nine buildings on campus. Um, there's been some tremendous growth and we made some tremendous progress. We have gone from a graduation at one point that was I believe about eight years ago that was about 6% to 30 and we're moving up in the 30 percentile, percentile range. Who deserves an education? They said I was too poor to go to college that I was too old. Que nunca tuvo una oportunidad. I'm not defined by other people's expectations. There are very few community colleges anywhere in the United States that can provide the benefits that we provide. I can manage a business. I can show you your heart. Cook a five-star meal. I can save your life. We're here to help you succeed. We all need someone. I did. A friend, a mentor, a teacher. Who didn't see me for what I wasn't. But what I could be. Students turn into family pretty quick here for me. And they're part of the tribe. We know the name of all the students. We know their goals. KCC has everything in store right here. GED classes, ESL, job programs. And with easy transfers to other schools, KCC is here for your future. They've got a pretty good shot when they leave here. It's a better place to live. It's a better income. It's a better life. I'm not just a farmer, I'm an agriculture scientist. I'm not just a car guy, I'm a certified diesel mechanic. I'm science. I'm business management. I'm culinary. I'm welding. And we're all KCC. 
So if you think this is just a community college, think again. Everything you need and more, right here, in the middle of nowhere, Klamath Community College. Education at the speed of life. We're literally so, in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. I'm big Ben and Moses like. Okay, so it's similar, yeah. North yeah. Of nowhere. I think we talked to one of your colleagues. Mm -hmm. so. so, anyway, before you just, the only person that's still been in the team <laughs> is Debbie. Um, Edith and I came in at approximately the same point, and then Ian came in. This is our current staff. Um, we decided to talk about the philosophy of CTLs, and one of the things we wanted to do was traditional instruction, but we also started looking at where could we go in other areas of the college and help people out, because on some level we're trainers, whether it's safety training or some other way, but we also had a philosophy in the past of a CTL team that was didn't give us a good reputation. There were a lot of instructors that they did not have good experience, didn't have good experiences in the past with our CTL. Our CTL had a previous CTL had a tendency to kind of talk down to them, give them the basics, and not really help them out. And we wanted to change that and bring into the philosophy of we could pretty much um, help everybody. So the previous philosophy was you only help faculty and adjuncts. And we didn't really want that to be the case. We wanted our customers to be faculty, adjuncts, staff, new faculty that were coming in that were not getting sufficient training, new adjuncts that were coming in. Um, we have a lot of trades and we're getting people in from the community who don't have a lot of experience teaching. And they also have great experience in their field, but they just don't know how to run things like Canvas and how to get started and how to find support services for their students. And we're also working with high school te teachers as one of our projects, so kind of long-term projects and trying to get um, a path for a lot of the students to move from high school into community college. Because as we learned a few days ago, some of the guidance counselors in local um, high schools were not recommending Plymouth Community College a number of years ago. And we're trying to, um, since we have Canvas, since other schools are looking at Canvas, we're trying to get into um, definitely helping them train and helping them get up to speed so that students already know how to use it whenever they get to us. So we also hired Ian. He has been um, doing some marketing for us. So we're able to market our CTL a little bit too. He has marketing experience and he's been able to put that and put us up front whenever in Canvas by building some of these and having us um, be on view. So we have a number of different areas of service. We want to unite distance education and face-to-face -face education. At one point in the past, there was a large mountain in between those two, and one never talked to the other. Resources were separate, and we wanted to basically unite that. We see them as students. We have many students who are taking both distance and face-to-face -face courses or transitioning between the two and sometimes all in the same semester. So, as I said, we had talents and skills we could offer to other um, departments. Campus resources, we could help with some of the campus resources, and I'll go into those in a moment. We looked at grant opportunities, and we were successful on a few and unsuccessful on one. And we needed a real center for teaching and learning. So this is a little bit about the story of our progress and the way we've tried to just think of making it different and a little bit new. So face-to-face -face and distance were just diametrically opposed. We had a person who was a distance education coordinator who didn't really get into the instructional design unless it was a distance course. Everything was very compartmentalized and siloed. And there's no point for that. Why should I really look at how the modality of teaching if I'm going to go in and help them do their um, content. So there are other areas of the campus that we wanted to look at. One of the issues that Edith presented on this morning was onboarding. 
We had a number of different issues with um, new adjunct onboarding, faculty onboarding, issues with um, they didn't know where their paycheck would come from or when they would get paid. They didn't know how to get around the community. They didn't know who they were working for sometimes, especially adjuncts. They didn't know how to get resources if they had a student who was potentially suicidal or having problems at home. They didn't know how to help that student because they weren't getting fully onboarded. We had a personnel manager who believed in passing along that stack of papers. Just here's, you know, 15 sheets, sign the sheets at the bottom, I'll take them back, and it's proven that you know things like FAFSA and mandatory reporting and other things, and it's like, no, we need to train these people. We need to have them know these issues. We can't just pass it off by there's a signature at the bottom of the form and they didn't really understand the form. So we're working with human resources. We've had a number of meetings with them and we are expanding the scope again. We're not just looking at adjuncts and faculty so that they know who they should be going to, but we're also looking at doing this for staff and in the same way. I was hired as an adjunct um, or I was hired as an instructional designer, but I was also a couple weeks before the semester, hey David, can you teach a speech class for us? And it's like, sure, I have plenty of experience in communications, I can teach a speech class. And I had a helicopter parent and they definitely felt that they could teach the course better than I could and wanted to have a meeting with me. So it turns out their student was a high school student, and so there were a number of issues with that. But I wasn't familiar with teaching high school students who were taking college courses. And it just basically became a kind of an event in my teaching career that was rather unpleasant. I called in the coordinator for um, high school coordinator into the meeting and once the meeting was completed, I think we had it pretty much uh, worked out. But I had a dean who a couple days later came into my office and was almost yelling at me going, why wasn't I in the meeting? Why didn't you tell me? I should have been there. I should have defended you. I should have, we should have had lawyers. We should have had, and it's like, I didn't know to call you. Well, of course you did, I'm your dean. But as an adjunct two weeks before a semester, I really wasn't told that. I saw her as my boss. <laughs> I didn't see the dean as also being my boss from whenever I'm teaching the course. So on that level, that's my personal, you know, personal experience, but that also drives change. Whenever you've gotten yelled at by a dean, you know, there's some, and it's not really your fault, you definitely want to make this better so it doesn't keep happening. We've also uh, become involved with new student orientation. We've looked at Canvas as an option for improving um, information delivery. So make this a document management system that works throughout the college. So we have new student orientation. Um, we have developed new student orientation. So we have put together videos and a lot of content so that new students can find the information and go through four hours of training. But as you all know, whenever you've gone through four hours of training, there's some information overload. You don't remember everything you need. So we created a website with a lot of the videos, a lot of the other content that they can see two years from now. If they need something a year later, they can go on the Canvas, see this course that they've already been enrolled in and be able to see it a year later and find out, oh, okay, I really need to talk to somebody in student services. We're also using, just as an aside, we're also using City Lab. And we have been very happy with um, the way that they can, the way we can make more content and make it more engaging to the students. So it definitely looks different than your standard Canvas page. We can give them references so that they can go to some of the links and it definitely looks a little bit better than some of the modules that are in there. We've also decided to do the student Canvas course. This is how you use Canvas. And in previous 
Well, the previous CTL had a six to eight hour course for learning how to use Canvas. And we kind of got the impression that a lot of students get, didn't get a lot out of it. I don't think a lot of them completed it. I think a lot of them are going, well, I have coursework to do. You're giving me a grade. Why should I go through the whole Canvas course? There were mouse training exercises so that we could teach freshmen how to use a mouse. There was an, a number of games that they had to play to be able to do. And so we, Edith stripped all that out and basically made it into the basics of this is what you need, the same way that we're doing this for faculty, but this is what you need as a student to be able to go into this course. Think. Are you done? No. Oh, okay. No, no. 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 Okay. <laughs> I'm just seeing if you have any. I haven't seen his presentation yet. <laughs> so we've also worked with student clubs. Canvas gives us, I mean, I sound like an advertisement for Canvas or KCC, and I apologize for that. But Canvas also gives us the ability to put in clubs. And so we have um, members of the various clubs around campus, and we add them as students in that uh, instance of Canvas and it gives them the officers, there's paperwork that they can see, they can get announcements like they would in a course, and so the club kind of becomes a course. And they can see a lot of the information be added to it, and we're working on getting other clubs within um, the community to be on Canvas. Also the faculty handbook. Another thing that we've moved into, or that EDIS has moved into Canvas, is putting the faculty handbook online. This makes it a lot easier to update. Central resource, it's not in notebooks, it's not on some SharePoint site that nobody can quite remember where to go on the SharePoint site. Um, no one's afraid of updating it because everybody's pretty much familiar with Canvas, but there aren't that many people that are familiar with SharePoint. So we're putting in quick references, a lot of different information in the um, handbook and being able to update it quickly and have it so that it's accessible and explainable so they can find it. And if you can't find information, it's not any good to anyone. We're also working with dual credit instructors, um, high school, <laughs> if you could do this a little bit better than I can. So just basically what I'm doing with the with this and what you know so I just kind of want to expand a little bit on what David's talking about is we're just trying to reach all the departments we're trying not to be so one we only deal with yeah faculty. no we're only just right here and and we have nothing we're we're branching out we're reaching every single department and seeing what we can do to help them so the K through 12 coordinator came to me and was like you know what's the best way to get all of my teachers to work together because you know she's got teachers all over the state high school teachers so how do I get the information to them how do I get the leads to talk to their instructors since I have some that are you know hundreds of miles away so we decided you know canvas again it's a nice central place to go um, and as the Center for Teaching and Learning we want to make sure that we're hitting every single instructor that we have because we are trying to be there to help them to teach that's our main goal we're not there to tell them how to teach we're there to help them, them teach and give them resources and make it easy for you for them to find them so we came up with the Canvas. Um, any instructor that works for us, whether they're dual credit or whether they're adjunct or full-time, of course, but um, they all have a Canvas account. So now we found that we can put all of that in there so the dual credits who are at the high schools can actually come in here, they find their lead, so you can kind of see the leads down there. They click on their lead, they get all the information there. We put in all their orientation packets so that has like, you know, the FERPA information, the, um, the contracts, how to use Canvas and MyKCC, which is another part of our, our website and, and tools that we have for faculty. So it, again, it's just making things easily accessible for any instructor that we have. We want to make them as successful because as, as we talked earlier today, um, the more that we have successful in, interaction with our faculty, the more we retain them. And we're gonna, we wanna retain the more, uh, you know, faculty as far as um, keep the good ones. You know, the, the ones that are not so good are probably going to leave. And so this, what we're also trying to do here is do a little bit of recruitment as well. If you're really good in, you know, teaching uh, Anthony Brown's our diesel mechanic, 
uh, automotive uh, lead. And so he may have a high school instructor that is really good at something on, um, you know, fixing cars. We may be able to bring him in as an adjunct. So if we show that we're supportive of any of our faculty, regardless of where they are, what type of faculty they are, this just makes it easier, and then they feel supported, and then we're going to retain them. Yeah, and we make sure that they have the right training. Because yes. Because we provided yeah. them well, training with so every <laughs> opportunity up there. So we are looking for a Canvas adoption rate of 95 percent. We have fortunately gotten some uh, feedback from the deans that they're going to support us in that. We are definitely working toward that number, and we need to spend the time instead of reaching out to departments sometimes just to evaluate how close we're getting. But we're trying to go for a 95 percent Canvas adoption rate in all our courses, not just face to face. But also in online or on site, and, and not just in distance yeah. courses, but in face on, on campus. And the reason for that is is because we also want to give the students, regardless of their modality, a resource. How do you know if I miss class today? How do I get the homework assignment? How do I turn in my assignment? We can also eliminate that whole need for a flash driver. You know, I, my dog ate my homework, so I couldn't turn it in. We can actually have them submit straight through Canvas, and then that way you know, they are going to be more successful in class as well. If they miss the course, we do have lecture capture, so we have been encouraging our faculty to do that as well. You know, do your class. If you know students, we've had students, I broke my leg, I can't make it for the next three weeks. Then they do lecture capture, at least they haven't missed the, the class, and they can still keep up. So again, we're talking about retention. That's a lot of our focus is student engagement and student retention. So having 95% of our courses on the, on the um, Canvas LMS is helping with that. And as the Center of teaching, um, teaching and Learning, we are the owners of the LMS, so that's why there's such a big, heavy push on the Canvas or our LMS that we use. Sorry, go ahead. Nope. <laughs> so we are looking um, forward to having a real Center for Teaching and Learning. It's been about a year long almost a year long process um, from first discussing it with administrators um, I think it had been before we came in even mm -hmm. but finding a place for us to be because we are at one point we're in the health science building which was helping everybody you know we were just the hallway down from health sciences but we were removed from the faculty building we're now getting a space in the faculty building where we can be close to them um, the real center for teaching and learning other than just the virtual one that was, you know, three offices and nobody knew quite um, what we did. We're now looking at doing some education, some marketing, but we're going to have staff offices there so that they can stop by and we'll be there. There's going to be a common area that we can shift furniture around and have small meetings, large meetings, be able to have a workstation there so that we can sit down side by side with a very large monitor, keyboard, and mouse, and sit down and see their course, lay out their course, move things around, see how they're working, look at previous courses if they want to import content, be able to sit down with them, and on a real-time basis be able to do that. So we also have a mini classroom, which is going to um, second as a soundproof area that we can do recording. We're going to put up whiteboards on one wall, uh, green screen on the other, and then have it as a mini classroom so that we can have about nine seats, six to nine mm -hmm. seats, with laptops and be able to sit down with um, a small class and be able to do things like onboarding or do things like small um, lunch and learns and um, teacher focused. And, and round tables and stuff. Yeah. And we're also going to just, because food usually works, because instructors, ex-grad students a lot of times, food usually brings them in popcorn and coffee, make it a gathering place for faculty so that they're coming by and hopefully kind of drinking our version of Kool-Aid that we can help them. Because it's difficult sometimes to help people. But we're trying to get them to um, accept that we can help them and we are on their side from previous, um, their previous history. So we're trying to make it a college-wide training facility for staff too. We can also onboard staff and use the area for small training. 
So work started in May and is still progressing. I'll walk you through these slides pretty fast, but this is our, these are our beginnings. This was the original space. A lot of the modular workstations got ripped out. This is the front lobby of the building three. These are a couple of the offices and doors had to be moved. Definitely the structure had to be rearranged. We had, we were work living, so to speak, because you kind of live in your office sometimes, living in construction. Um, due to a health science center dean, we kind of got moved, a couple of us got moved out of our offices in the nice health sciences building into construction. So we have heard every different kind of construction, you know, saw, drill, screwdriver, every, hammers <laughs> banging, everything else. I didn't put in a sound recording, but you can just imagine sometimes what it was like. So we've looked at bare walls and studs for quite a while, um, dimly lit at times. We have had um, our offices so that we can actually work in the office, but you kind of have to be careful whenever you go out the door sometimes. This is a view of the lobby that they're turning into part lobby, part testing center. Um, some start on the testing center. Because we didn't have a testing center that was sufficient for some different types of testing for certifications. So instead of sending somebody 120 miles to be able to take a test to do their certifications, we'll now have a testing center. So we kind of have been making do. Um, we've definitely been looking at construction for a while. We had issues with they put in wood studs and then found out that those were fire rated. But we're finally beginning to get fire retardant studs that they've um, put up and sheetrock. And we're very, we, you know, it's one of those things that's like, well, we're just putting up sheetrock and we're going, woohoo! <laughs> We're making progress. We're so happy. We're taking pictures. You can't believe how happy this is. Yeah. And the guys are just going, people are nuts. But um, this is going to be our future classroom. We're going to have a smart board at the front. Um, Edith will talk a little bit about how we had that opportunity. We're going to have tables on the right and basically just make it into a small area with extra on equipment so that we can do some of the switching and other activities in the classroom. And, you know, this is what we've walked into whenever we've walked out of our offices sometimes. So it's been interesting. Along with, you look up the ceiling and it's kind of like, I hope that doesn't fall. So we got walls. As I said, it's sometimes interesting what you find out when you walk into our space. Yeah, title. Uh, title is we got pink and fuzzy, which also made us happy because they were insulating both sides or insulating our area, getting some of that soundproofing so that we can uh, move forward to having a recording studio and making that available. Uh, about a year ago, we applied for a steel case grant. We were looking at, I can't remember how much the steel case grant is for. 70,000? Around 70,000. We were hoping we were going to be able to get it because that would give us furniture for the Center for Teaching and Learning, and that would hopefully spur on development and creating our own. Kind of work the other way around. We have our own Center for Teaching and Learning now, and we didn't get the steel case grant. It had been awarded to OIT the, year pre the previous year, and so we're kind of looking at that's why we didn't get our grant. However, um, Edis and um, our VP of instruction um, put together a Title III grant. And I'll let Edis talk about Title III grant. So again, um, you know, like most colleges, we all have to find ways to find thing, fun things and stuff like that. So the Center for Teaching and Learning, of course, was our vision, and I came up with that about a year ago. Um, I, I really needed a place that we had faculty, but I also wanted to, you know, say that besides the faculty and stuff, we're also going to be reaching out to the students as well. And since we are a center for teaching and learning, we want to make sure that we give students the ability to 
improve themselves as well because when they're in class, they're not going to learn all the things like the quick trip tricks in, in Microsoft Office or whatever. Anyway, the Title III grant, um, actually our grant writer wrote it. I, I just gave some list of things that I would like to have. Well, we were awarded the Title III grant. It was a really exciting moment. We've got quite a bit of funding. That is going to help our Center for Teaching and Learning because it's also part of a career development center um, program that we're going to be instituting at Klamath Community College as well, which is going to help students find a job outside of college once they get their degree or their certificate or their pathway, uh, pathway certificate. We're going to help them find a job. We're going to find externships, internships, find ways to get them employed. So that's what the Career Development Center is about. Um, it is going to fall underneath the Center for Teaching and Learning. Um, and again, that's why we're starting the outreach with the students as well. It's going to be really exciting. Um, so a lot of the equipment that we, are, we were looking for for the Center for Teaching and Learning, we will be able to purchase now because of that grant. Of course, the Career Development Center is going to get a, a, a good chunk of that because we're going to be hiring some individuals and, and other people with that. So the the way that the Career Development Center aligns with us again is just because we are working with faculty. Faculty also have resources to the business areas outside of the college so we can actually start finding places for um, students to find um, jobs. So that's going to be really exciting and, and it's a, I'll let everybody know how it goes next year. Maybe I'll, who knows, Maybe I won't do another presentation next year. <laughs> but anyway, um, so it's very exciting news for KCC. But again, you know, the Center for Teaching and Learning, um, just our, our whole goal was to, as, as David was implying and inferring to earlier today, we had come from an, a situation where faculty were not feeling comfortable with the Center for Teaching and Learning. Instead of having people that, was, that were there willing to help, it, w it was people who wanted to teach people how to teach. That's not what we do. So if you are looking at getting a Center for Teaching and Learning, um, please understand that your role is, or in my opinion, the role is that you're there to help. Don't tell a teacher how to teach. They went to school for that. Um, you know, look for resources, look outside of your scope of, or your silo of, I'm in the Center for Teaching and Learning and that's all I do. You wanna reach out to all the communities of the college because that is how you're going to um, make yourself as a solid component of the college. Um, the Career Development Center, again, um, we're just looking to bring in career uh, counselors to help students find a career. And then we will be able to help faculty and, and administration start looking and, and um, streamlining programs that will get students jobs. And working with liaisons for business community yeah. and other resources and so they graduate from KCC, they're not having to move someplace else to be able to get a job. All the trades and all of the other mm -hmm. all so we're very excited about that. And I know that I'm a little bit past a little bit early, but I don't think anybody will mind too much. <laughs> um, but please, if you have any time, is there anything that anyone would like to add? Any ideas that you have had that are your center for teaching and learning? If you are part of one, certainly you probably have one at your college or university. What have you found that they've done in innovative ways? No, that's all right. Also, no, we do have our own logo. It's down on the right there. We created that. We wanted to make sure that anything came out of the Center for Teaching and Learning also had our logo on it. That way they knew as soon as that, as soon as they got documentation or they saw that logo that it, it, it was coming from the Center for Teaching and Learning. And I do recommend branding your, your center um, just to kind of just let them know that you're there. And then, like I said, it's easy for them to identify. We put it on everything we have aside from our business cards, but that was done before we were hired. So anyway, that's all we have for today. Um, if you have any questions, ctl at clamacc.edu. Feel free to reach out to us. We do have um, under academics on our website, our Klamath Community College website, uh, the Center for Teaching and Learning is under there. It's actually Center for Teaching and Learning. It's written all the way out. Um, we have more information about what we do there, workshops that are available, um, other types of information that may be useful. And, and you know, if you're a good person, innovative and stuff like that, you know stealing is the best way to get your information. So, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Um, the, the challenge 
Okay. And I didn't get to come to your session this morning. Oh, okay. But I think it's a wonderful to have a handbook on mm -hmm. online. Do you use that info for the people who are in the middle of a high learning process? Yes. So, so in Canvas, there's an ability to make a co course public. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to log in or anything. And so they can just actually on the Center for Teaching and Learning website, we actually have a link. I hope we have a link. I'll have to check when I go back on Monday. Yeah, I'll double check. I was pretty certain I did that, but you know, with the way it, you know, new new terms start and everything. But yeah, we make everything accessible so that they can just go in and be able to grab that information and see it beforehand, especially with the new faculty oriented new faculty. Um, one of the things that we do for the new faculty is we actually have a handbook and we've given them where to eat, where to find a vet child care, where the movie theater is, you know, those things, especially if they're moving into the area, it just is a nice way to show them that you care about them and that you've got things and what to expect when you get to KCC. And so we're going to be revamping that whole, you know, that was one of the things we were talking about this morning is, you know, revamping the whole faculty orientation. Um, and, and there's a lot of um, good information there as well, but um, yeah, it is difficult, and I know where you're talking, about, you know, where you're coming from, especially in, with adjuncts and then full-time faculty and stuff like that. So, then the whole hiring process. Oh, it's working. In a couple <laughs> weeks, and you're supposed to get them up and running pretty much immediately. Yes. 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 I got you. Well, whenever we have a new adjunct come in, uh, we're getting information from human resources, human resources mm -hmm. so that whenever they get through the hiring process, they get their six digit number for canvas. Basically, you know about it hopefully before you. So, whenever there's been a hiring decision made, we pretty much find out about it. We're able to prepare, we're able to contact them. Uh, and this is written in a form email that she sends out that this is who we are, this is how we do it. Please come by, please make an appointment as soon as possible so that we can walk you through. This is our process, you know. And we also, or we just created a form mm -hmm. on forms that they can fill out because we were looking at this and going, they could have zero experience teaching to yeah. be the best teacher ever, and we don't really want to cover, you know, anything with classroom management if they've been teaching for 20 years, or they've been teaching for 20 years and they have zero LMS experience, eight LMSs, and we've got to have a course in an LMS form. So we're trying to get that basic information um, as early as possible so that we can pretty much, you know, tune our training into the person mm -hmm. and make it as quickly as possible and then walk through. I can probably bring um, that up. Walk through getting them initial training mm -hmm. as soon as we can. It's <laughs> definitely, you know, we always have that problem that everything happens in the two weeks before. Mm -hmm. False domestic exams, but at least some of them we can get early. Uh, we're using Zoom when we are out of town, uh, but we're definitely trying to tune that in. See if uh, we can find they it. They meet with Ian, he gives them the sandbox, he gives them uh, information, a little bit of information about the Canvas courses, and then they meet with me and I talk to them about their course, how they want to teach their course how to go into Canvas, how to build things, how to look at it. And whenever their eyes glaze over, I ask them if they have time for another appointment really? because they can only retain so much. And we try to make another appointment with them before the semester begins. And I may need to help them with their course and they may be fine with their course and all those different variations. Mm -hmm. But at least, at least we have a chance to be able to, you know, get them started instead of 
to be saying to this place is we should have had a course in Canvas and they're going, we didn't know that. And I'll show you the form. And that has unfortunately happened. So, so, so. Okay. You know, they are paid for uh, the time, for teaching time. Um, so it's a. That's it. Oh. Yeah, there's kind of different philosophy. I mean, we've had different, we've discussed that a bit with some of the faculty, and their viewpoint is we have them come to adjunct in service before the fall semester mm -hmm. begins, and we pay them for their time to go to adjunct in service. No. But there's also that point whenever you're going from developing a class no. that they really should get paid to develop a class, mm -hmm. especially if it's a new one. Sure. But there's also some point where it's just kind of you have to invest in your job. Mm -hmm. And we kind of have a viewpoint that if we're spending six or eight hours toward working as an adjunct, that's something that they shouldn't necessarily be compensated for unless it's in the contract. I don't you know, know compensate them for every hour. But I don't think you can compensate an adjunct for every hour. Mm -hmm. so well, the adjuncts are different. We do yeah. pay them for any hour they do training. Okay. Yeah. So I can't find the so form right now. Kind of that philosophy of, you know, this is what it takes to teach. We kind of gave up on our website a little bit just because we found that the canvas is a little bit easier to use. So, um, so yeah, some of the stuff that I we had things in the website, things on SharePoint, things on Canvas, mm -hmm. and we're just trying to gather it all. Let's see, and and then of course their their thing, but this will be like their first day. So this is kind of like an overview of what they're going to see, what's going to happen to them the first day. So they can actually access this before they even get to the school and understand what what we're going to be looking for and stuff like that, and what they can expect. And then, um, so we try to give as much information out there as possible. So, so you know, it, it's just, again, we want to be a hub. That's, that's the word I was looking for earlier. We want to be a hub. We want to reach all areas. And as a center for teaching and learning, if that's something that you're thinking of instituting, you know, yeah, we're instructional designers. Yeah, we're trainers. Yeah, we're administrators of an LMS. But that doesn't mean that we can't branch out and help other areas. Because all of our, our staff also have ID numbers and can access the campus courses. So why don't we put that information up in there and make it easy? So we're about access, getting everything out to everybody. So. You know, and, and, and for me, I feel that that makes us a very strong component of the college. You know, we want to be almost the center of it. So it's, it's really exciting. And the, the president, our president, was willing to go ahead and build that space for us. It's very exciting, and faculty are very excited about because we're starting to require introduction videos in all our Canvas courses. Um, and so we're going to have that recording studio so they can do that. But also, with that recording studio, we're going to be working with the digital media program and allowing students come in and use the space as well. So again, we're reaching out. And that, that's the big thing that I think about Center for Teaching and Learning is it's not just about faculty. It's about everybody. So, all right. And you hosted a very nice afternoon. <laughs> so thank you for that too all right we'll let you guys go though i know we're all kind of at the end of our our week you know <laughs> we've got enough i've done yeah. it you know so we do appreciate you stopping by if you have any questions um don't hesitate to reach out to us we'd be more than happy to help you i'll put out some cards if you're interested in grabbing one or two i don't you know um you know and you can you know an hour is not always enough time to give you all the information. And, you know, if you ever come to Klamath, maybe we'll give you a tour. <laughs> so, all right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. So that we are actually, um, your facility looks so much better, but we are, thank you.
building a media recording space and then we are converting one of the larger space in the library for editing workstation and nice. I'll be moving into that place for actual warm body support yes. person yes. Yes. Yeah. because just the posting instructional yeah. videos it's not gonna it's not happen. enough right right yeah. there, there, there are lots of anxiety among the faculty yeah. so um that's what we are doing but the, the budget was limited um expectation is high yes. and, but Everything that you have done and you're trying to do is like in our vision okay. that, that yeah. is streamlining, hiring, you know, yes. process yes. and yes. just making a welcoming um, environment. Okay. Well, um, I have, well, I put it up on the, the Dropbox, the mm -hmm. presentation I did earlier. This morning, okay. Okay, so course. that might help some because yeah. that's what been the big push for us is mm -hmm. about the new faculty orientation because we are worried about retention, mm -hmm. about whether they're adjunct or not. Right. So, so that was... Senate President, we usually meet with her at least twice a semester, if not every month. Right. Uh, we're going to faculty senate meetings so that it kind of feels like we're part of the faculty. Sure. You know, we're enough and <laughs> participating in these events. Is that yeah, you know, it's that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we're trying to just be part of the faculty in a way. I mean, not having that separation. Right, because if they are supported they will support you. Yeah, right. so that's, yeah. that's my And story, we're also kind of looking a little bit for that it's, tipping it takes, point. It so. takes a lot of, I mean, it's taken us a lot of <laughs> meeting and talking and let's try this. How can we help you let's try that. what is not let's working? Let's try this, yeah. you know, and then it's like, this didn't work, let's try this. I mean, it's, we do, um, during in-service week, we do a lot of workshops and we found out that, oh, some of, we actually let the deans pick it out this year and that kind of was a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> and Don't tell. Nothing leaves this room, right? Right. I mean, no, no. You know. Well, it was, and, and they're aware of it. But you know, like they did all this training that should have been done on another day, on this day. So we're still doing a lot of trial and error. But we would be glad to share what we've learned and what may have been successful. But definitely, the big thing is is communicate with all your departments. Get out there. Hey, is there a train? Or is, like for payroll, I did a whole, we went to ADP, so I made them five different presentations. You know, here's how you sign in, here's if you're a supervisor, here's if you're an employee, and I put it all together for them. And then I, bu I built that relationship, so they say, oh, you know, We'll be more than happy to inform you of our employees. We'll be more than happy to tell you about So, you know, safety and uh, safety guy, you know, we, we build him something, or NSO was the big one, then he's doing orientation. We built the whole, pro, you know, course for them, revamped it, helped them get it onto Canvas, and so now we're working with first year experience sure. department, so we are meet, we're reaching out. Because if you start yeah. being just, we're just about faculty, you're going to not be, mm -hmm. you know, integrated into the, you're not going to be part of the community. Whole university. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's the way to look at it. Did you, what, what LMS did you use before campus? It was um, eLearn. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, so, but it got too expensive. Oh, okay. So, okay, Canvas, because mm -hmm. the, the Octilla uh, was at the consortium, so we got a good price. So. Oh, I'm sorry about and that. Yeah. <laughs> Just the beginning of it. Yeah. Well, Canvas is... We've been really happy with Canvas. Yeah. Oh, I mean, good. Nice and to then hear that. Which ones are you looking at? Uh, Canvas in the bright space, and then we are using Blackboard right okay, now, yeah, but yeah. we are not happy. Yeah. But yeah. our faculty population, they just do not like changes. Yes. Right. So, right. The, so we are trying to say, like, hey, at least to look at other options, and then right. you will realize that there are better products out there. OIT, so if you want to contact them, OIT uh -huh. has went from Blackboard to Canvas. They okay. just went this summer. Oh, they just did, okay. They just got into Canvas, okay. and that's really been nice because actually our high schools are looking at Canvas, mm -hmm. so we're going to have that continuation. I know, right. And actually, I think that the, the faculty is, mm -hmm. I think a lot of it transfers over very easily. Okay. You know, that it's, sure. it, it makes a lot of sense. That's, yeah, that's the biggest fear yeah. for them. Like, oh, you guys are creating more yeah. work. So, like, it's like a, it might be a short term pain, but right. then for right. long term, long -term right. benefit for mm -hmm. them. So, yeah. 
just the you know, I've taught classes and use rubrics, it'll make your grading easier. Right. But yeah, but I have to do work to create rubrics right. yeah. and it's like it'll make your life easier yeah. in the long run. So yeah, it's just the huge it's version of that. Yes, yeah. stepping out of their comfort zone. Yeah. Yeah. And they did, they, at KCC, we missed the whole transition mm -hmm. from you learn to, to Canvas and like, but I think it was only like a two month transition. Oh, they wow. did it pretty quickly and it was, and it really seemed to sure. went really well. Okay. And then if you guys do decide to go to Canvas, mm -hmm. um, I would recommend looking at City Labs. It's a good, okay. it's cheap, it's only $4,000 a year. Okay. And it really, does it enhances the city whole lab. city okay. lab? It oh, okay. en en enhances the whole uh, course. Um, it gives it. That's how you when you saw it up there. That was all city labs with the the colors okay. and the the little links on the front page and stuff like that. That's all through city labs, and okay. it helps with the student engagement. Well, Eddie just told us that she that Oh, good. Okay. good. Well, so, it would be, I think, Bruce would be very happy too. I think so. It's a yeah. mountain if we all went with Canvas. It's but, uh, I, and their support and is amazing. Really good. Their so, Canvas is support oh, is really I am good. Just, I just can't. Um, can't wait to yeah. live a life without Blackboard. Yeah, Blackboard, I know. Western so, Oregon was just talking to me. About, they're on Moodle still. I'm like, Western Oregon, yeah. you're too big to be on Moodle. Come on. Oh, but I think uh, Eddie has been talking to them. Yeah, that's what they were saying right. that they were looking at. Yeah, so, to, so Janelle Nags is her name. Um, she would probably be one of the best people to talk to. She is okay. at OIT. Mm -hmm. um, she is the administrator, the okay. LMS administrator. Yeah. So she might be able to give you some insight of what they've done. And she was the Blackboard administrator and now she's Canvas, so she so might she be the person. The yeah. Transition. And if she doesn't know, she'll be able to direct you where to go. Just in case, you know, because I can't give you any suggestions as far as making that transition. Right, right, yeah. So, I mean, I'd love to, oh. but not really, because then I don't have to go through it. So. <laughs> well, thank you so much. All right, well, it was really nice talking with you. Yes, yes, definitely. You'd be like, ah. Oh, Thank <laughs> you.